donuts from the sky, slowing down time with cold brew, and a not-so-secret secret Santa. The rest of the episodes are comedy gold, but we're ranking just the cold opens for Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Generally, a cold open describes any episode setup that takes place before the opening title, but for the purposes of this list and in accordance with the unique way Brooklyn Nine-Nine handles cold opens, we've defined it as any pre-title skit that has nothing to do with the rest of the episode. Obviously, everything on this list will make you at the very least smile, but there's something particularly special about this cold open from the episode Beach House. Having detected that Captain Holt may be pantsless following an uncharacteristic lunch malfunction, Jake decides to provide the squad with visual proof, cue several unsuccessful attempts to get the captain to stand up. Eventually, Jake brings in a replacement bowl of soup to entice him out of his seat, and Holt, of course wanting this to end, just admits to sitting in his underwear. Jake celebrates his victory, but also creates a second soup pants interaction. Sir, I need you to sign off on... Look at us! Just three people with pants on having a normal conversation. Yep, no story here. While investigating a robbery at an electronics store in the pilot episode, Jake and Amy take very different approaches to the case. Amy questions the owner, and Jake distracts himself with anything that happens to catch his eye. Having arrived early and explaining that he already found video footage of the robbery thanks to a nanny cam hidden within a teddy bear, Jake just can't help himself and makes the bear hit on Amy, though not successfully. Sorry. Detective Santiago? Don't walk away from me! This cold open gives viewers a rare glimpse into the life of one Rosa Diaz, who has never been known to dole out any semblance of personal information. Rosa's surprising desire to do something nice by taking her boyfriend out to celebrate his birthday spawns all sorts of weird suggestions, but it's the drunk guy in the holding pen who has the idea Rosa finds most attractive, for a few seconds anyway. If you go to the top of the Empire State Building, that's very romantic. Huh. Maybe I will. You can pee on the whole city from up there. Come on! When Charles treats the squad to some cold brew, he unintentionally causes a caffeine crisis so hilarious there's no way it wasn't going to make this list. Captain Holt, Rosa, and Jake all somehow forgot that cold coffee still has caffeine in it and went to town on Charles' special brew, and the result is wonderful. From slow-mo Charles to the double-speed trio, the writing, editing, and performances are stellar, as the caffeine fiends decide that there's absolutely nothing wrong with them whatsoever. Captain, how do you feel? Great, excellent, amazing. I feel better than I've ever felt in a moment in my entire life. So we're all fine. Yep. 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 Jake and Holt's relationship has always been the linchpin of the show, ranging from their weird father-son dynamic to the incredible levels of pettiness they sink to. This particular cold open falls into the former category. By season six, Holt is getting a little tired of Jake's issues with tardiness. It's especially galling when one considers the fact that Jake's paramour is the frickin' queen of being on time. In order to underline the importance of timekeeping to his work son, Captain Holt devises a special kind of torture. Six years, and no matter how hard I try, I still can't get you to understand the importance of being punctual. Maybe you should just give up and accept me for who I am? No, I will break you right now. Ow. Though he's never been one for any kind of interpersonal touching, Holt has painstakingly invented and rehearsed a special personalized handshake for every member of the squad and the copy guy. It's the one thing Jake never saw coming. It's no secret that Holt and Amy consider themselves to be head and shoulders above the rest of the squad. This superiority reaches its zenith in the cold open to maximum security. After Holt gives them a brain teaser that will reveal the location of a clandestine meeting, most of the squad slowly trickles into the broom closet. Jake is way too full of himself over his victory, but does become suitably embarrassed when Amy's love of adult puzzle camp is brought up. Doesn't she go to like an adult puzzle camp every summer? Yes, but please don't bring that up. I've been throwing out her mailers. Perhaps the squad shouldn't be so quick to mock Amy's summertime activities, however. When they notice that Holt and Amy are absent, they consider that they might be in the wrong place. Hitchcock and Scully's entrance confirms it. Jake is unable to contain his disappointment at discovering he's no smarter than Hitchcock and Scully, and it's beautiful. When an incredibly extravagant gift basket arrives, the squad decides it absolutely must be for them, and they help themselves to the basket's decidedly decadent contents. Gina, always the wisest member of the team, interrupts the feast by pointing out that the basket is an obvious gift to Holt from his husband, Kevin. Panic ensues, but Jake knows exactly how to fix it. We cut to Captain Holt opening an entirely rebuilt basket. The squad waits with bated breath as he inspects the replacement contents. A veritable smorgasbord of shiny new stationery emerges. It's clear the team has spared no expense to cover their gluttonous tracks, and it works like a charm. That man really knows me. 
This cold open has everything that makes Brooklyn Nine-Nine great. Stephanie Beatrice's complete commitment to deadpan delivery, which remains intact as she tosses donut holes at Andy Samberg, is on fire here. With the writers apparently unsatisfied with the already brilliant bit, they take things one step further. Jake misses catching a donut hole with his mouth, and it goes sailing off the roof. But it's only natural that the straight pastry finds a home in Scully's mouth, several floors below. Yep, Rosa is that good, and the fried desserts falling from the sky is literally something that must be a dream come true for Scully. It's finally happening! We're used to seeing Hitchcock bring pain entirely on himself, but in this skit, he's merely the innocent victim of Jake's diabolical scheme to make the older detective pee his pants. Well, as innocent as Hitchcock gets, anyway. Jake relies on the tried-and-true summer camp method for his prank, leaving Hitchcock's hand in a bowl of lukewarm water. Jake immediately brags about his joke to the squad. When they check on the pee progress, Hitchcock is somehow face down in the water. They grab him in the nick of time, but in Rose's opinion, this macabre turn hugely improves the whole situation. I'll take it back, Jake. Great prank. When Hitchcock feels he's been badly treated at the local coffee shop, he vents his frustrations to the gathered squad members. He's about as worked up as we ever see him, so clearly the slight has had a profound effect. Who knew Hitchcock was so concerned with how people see him? Maybe there's a soft side to him that we haven't seen before? Nope. Jake eventually interrupts Hitchcock to tell him the reason for the odd treatment. Hey Hitchcock, your penis is hanging out. Oh, well, that's a relief. When Amy fails to appear at her desk at exactly 9 a.m., everyone comes up with outlandish theories to explain her uncharacteristic tardiness. Holt's contribution, however, clearly pushes his imagination to its very limits. Having searched his mind for the ultimate bizarre scenario, he proudly proclaims his guests that she's running late because of a long line at the bank. Andre Brower's deadpan delivery is amazing, but he's actually saving the best for last. When Amy walks in seconds later, the squad demands that she explain herself. There's a problem at the bank. Hot damn! Each member of the team picks a name for Secret Santa in this holiday-themed cold open, except for Rosa, who refuses to participate. What follows belongs entirely to Andy Samberg, thanks to his absolutely perfect delivery. Almost instantly identifying everyone's Secret Santa, Jake proceeds to humble brag about his skills. We even discover he's legally changed his middle name to Sherlock for exactly this sort of situation. Rather than being impressed by Jake's antics, Holt speaks for the whole squad and suggests something that shows their displeasure at Jake ruining the game. Should we draw the names again and leave Jake out? Yeah! yeah. Oh, Sherlock wants a present! There has never been, nor will there ever be, a better cold open than this. As Jake and a haunted-looking woman examine a lineup of five men, she reveals that while she didn't get a look at the criminal's face, she heard him singing the Backstreet Boys' 1999 hit, I Want It That Way. Jake has them start singing, and soon it becomes a full-blown karaoke session. The idea of having a police lineup sing I Want It That Way might sound surreal, but in practice, it's effortlessly perfect. The musical magic is so powerful, in fact, that Jake joins in and forgets the reason for the singing. It was number five. Number five killed my brother. Oh my god, I forgot about that part. 